and Hushan, this is Open Mic, and we are back to the second segment of our program. When we left off, we were just trying to evaluate uh, why the price of oil has suddenly dropped sig so significantly. I think there's a number of reasons, as ever said, there may have been a glut on the market, the, the world economy is not doing well, people sure. are using less oil, mm -hmm. but we should not lose sight of the fact that the West and Russia uh, are presently at war with each other. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, many sanctions have been put against Russia. And um, I think this is the question of oil, because remember, Russia is not a, a great manufacturing country. Um, 80 to 90 percent of their revenue is from oil. So if the, the West can squeeze them, um, that would cause, that would, that would bring a new dimension to br of bringing Mr. Putin to the table earlier rather than later. Though I have my, my gut feeling tells me Mr. Putin will never come to the table because you never feel a thousand lashes on another man's <laughs> back. Mr. Putin, as an individual, is extremely well off. He, ha he doesn't feel the pinch, but the Russian people are already feeling it because things are pretty bad there. The ruble has dropped by 30%. Um, he, he, he himself has has put sanctions on the imports from the West. So food which the people were accustomed of having, that ain't on the table anymore. So um, it's going to be a quite an interesting future. Uh, but I would like Everett's input on what I've just said. Yes, um, re regarding the, uh, the geopolitics aspect of this whole thing, um, there are some who believe that the Americans are using the influences to have the using oil in, as an economic weapon now against against Russia. Um, since the annexation of Crimea from Ukraine, there have been, like you said, many um, a whole range of uh, sanctions against Russia. The big player in that, I mean, there is m there is merit to suggest that there is some play there on this. Yes, collusion. And you have to remember there is a very close collaboration between the, Europe, the, the, um, the Saudi, Saudi Arabia and the United States. Certainly. Very close yeah. allies. Right. And the most influential member of OPEC is Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Arabia. Correct. Without uh, a doubt. The whole arrangement for yeah. level of production, the ability to adjust yeah. the production. Plus the fact they have $2.3 trillion in deposits. Well, they have the second so largest have, deposits have, of yeah, oil yeah, I mean, yeah. in the world. Um, and of like you, the, the, the other issue about, in fact, the, the level of reserves, and I'm talking about cash reserves, is such that they could, they could avoid having to export oil for a one year and still be able to run As much as that, yes. eh? wow. yeah. So, I mean, yeah. they could withstand that. So, there is, there is some who say that, look, the Americans are using the opportunity um, are influencing OPEC through Saudi Arabia yeah. to keep prices down yeah. to hurt the, Amer the, um, the Russians. Yeah. Um, th there is that view. Um, but the truth is there, is, there is an economic argument here that the supply is outstripping demand here. You know, I've always felt Everest in life, for every action there's a reaction. Mm -hmm. And we should not lose sight that what is happening today there will be a reaction. You and I may not know it today, mm -hmm. but you know, a lot of people are going to get hurt eh, in the process, mm -hmm. uh, and which always happens in life. The weak ones will fall. fall. I mean, you take a place like Venezuela, for instance, that's already up the creek, and now with the oil prices as they are, mm -hmm. number one, in fact, I was just talking recently to somebody from Venezuela who passed through, and they said to me, um, don't be surprised that within six months, you see a coup in San Lucia, in, uh, in Venezuela, yeah, yeah. where the military are going to take yeah. over. Because they said there's already discussions that that is happening, because they know that Mr. Maduro, who's not as char charismatic as Chavez, mm -hmm. inherited a situation. And, you know, with this, what has happened today, it's uh, way above his head what he can do. Way yeah. above. And, um, the army have already um, are moving in. Uh, not that they want to get rid of him, but to stabilize the country because it could be total chaos. I mean, because things are bad down there. Mm -hmm. Now, it comes at a time when, you know, uh, places like Cuba, for instance. Cuba I, I owes Venezuela Billions. several billion dollars in fuel. And, but in all fairness to Cuba, 
Cuba has provided a lot of professional Assistance aid to, mm -hmm. to, 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 Venezuela. Um, to, Cuba, to Venezuela. But you know, a place like Jamaica, 1.8 billion, Nicaragua, I think Nicaragua has already pulled out uh, of mm -hmm. the Alba situation. Thank God for St. Lucia. I don't think we, we have take, not taken any oil here. No, no we, haven't. Yeah. we haven't. Thank goodness we have. Because what is happening now is that the IMF and the World Bank are now saying that even though that um, you don't pay the money, um, it's on it, your books. It, it is going to go down in the books as a debt, debt. and that's how they're going to rate you. Yeah. So, you know, when somebody has, like Dominica, for instance, they have sent, for instance, for the last four months, or more than that, six, seven months, they've been billing them, and they have just ignored the bills completely. They just cannot pay it because the money is not there, because the money has been spent. Yeah. As a matter of fact, there was an article written recently about uh, the bad situation of, in Grenada. Mm -hmm. And Grenada is a basket case today. And they have warned them, that's when you take easy money, that's what can happen. You know, people have to learn to live within their yes. means. Yeah. And mm -hmm. because really and truly, um, I have a lot of experience about the oil business because I was in the shipping business. And I distinctly remember in 1974, I was in, in, in Puerto Rico when we got the news that OPEC had started. And overnight, we were paying 10 cents a gallon for diesel. It went up to a dollar. So it wow. went up tenfold. So, and, and it took six or seven months for them, for the uh, um, shipping market to address yes. the freight rates. So you wow. can imagine that. It was very difficult for us, you know, extremely difficult. And, um, you know, I, I distinctly remember Everest. At $16 a barrel, which was the year that I got out of shipping, that was in around 1980 80s. something, 82. At $16 a barrel, I could not stay in shipping because mm. it was too expensive. In 1969 and 1970, when I sent a ship to Venezuela, I would pay 5,000 US dollars for one filling. In 1982, it was 100,000 wow. US. Wow. And I said one day, and, and, and that even in 82, the freight rates had not yet manifested itself because, as I told you before, for every action, there's a reaction. Action. Here's what happened in the shipping business. People like us, whose ships burnt diesel oil, we were squeezed out because the Europeans brought in new ships that burned something called Bunker C, mm -hmm. which was like 30% of the cost. But the capital cost was quite significant Maybe. because they brought in these big, these engines with what they call scavenger valves mm -hmm. that worked at very high temperature. Okay. And as a result of that, these people, and that's how the container business came mm -hmm. in too. So they took the opportunity of squeezing us out of the shipping business, and then they would Colonize. just leave how many hundred containers in one port. And whereas when I was in business, five and 6,000 to tons was called a small package of cargo. Today in Venezuela, if you have one ton of cargo, You'll get it. They just put it in the container, yes. consolidate it, send it, and then take it over. Sure. So sure. That, that, that's what I wanted to ask you about. The, what, what, what kind of other repercussions can you see? Because even here for you in San Lucia, you run a, uh, a gas station, mm -hmm. and you know you see the people coming down. I, I've come to your place several times, mm -hmm. and I see people really scrunting to buy a few gallons of diesel or oil. Just like yeah. people with... with, with, with um, who have um, these cell phones? Mm -hmm. They are the most expensive, but they can't. They call it back, call it back because my, my credit finished. So, and when they say now, ah, I see some hope, but are they going to spend the money differently, or what is going to happen? Yeah, it's true. You know, um, I mean, I look around the stations we have, and um, the traffic seems to be, I mean, more or less, you know, the same. Yeah. But, but when you put the numbers together, doesn't make sense. you realize the volume hasn't really shifted. So what is happening, people are frequenting the stations more often, um, buying in smaller quantities. The spend per, per right. visit is, is a lot smaller. Uh -huh. um, you see people coming up with expensive cars and they put in and $20 gas, $10 correct. gas. It's the same thing at the hotels. Yeah. I have watched the, our hotels. We have the same numbers coming in. But our, our revenue is down no. because they're not spending. Whereas a person would come and hire a car mm -hmm. or go on a tour or do different things or for that matter, go to the restaurant. Everybody is cutting back. Yeah, and this is my concern that the, the, the revenue to us is contracting. Yeah. Yeah. So th th uh, my, my question to you a while ago was what other areas can you see that will be affected as a result? Uh, because when you're playing yo-yo with people, for instance, 
So everybody has oil is going down and it goes back up again. Now, I heard recently, um, in fact, this morning, that oil could go to $50 a barrel, okay? Mm -hmm. It's going to go to $50 a barrel. Now, but I do agree with you, it's not going to stay there. Mm -hmm. but it wouldn't. It's not in the interest of producers. Keep it what, what, what period of time are, are we looking at? I know it's all hypothetical mm -hmm. when you see another change taking place. No, like I said, I mean, I, the way, I mean, from all I've read um, in terms of what's taking place in the marketplace, it will go down probably, at I would say, at best case, 65. Mm -hmm. And then you'll see some movement to get it back up. Because the truth is, the lower it goes, it's hurting some OPEC countries severely. Yeah. And it's not in their interest to keep and it. And pressure will be brought to bear on, on Saudi Arabia because yeah. they can withstand it. Yeah. But yeah. Iran can't. Iraq can't. Venezuela cannot. And um, I mean, if you want to keep the group together, yeah. then you have to look after the interests of the group. It can't be for one person. Yeah. So then, I mean, they influence about 30% of the market. They would, the adjustments will come. Yeah. Now, you know, Everest, I, I asked you about what are the areas. Now, another, I've just talked to a, a professional mm -hmm. in, in St. Lucia who has spent a lot of time in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. And he now, he's now telling me the other problem now is liquefied gas. gas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is another problem that we have because uh, um, he tells me that by the middle of next year, 40% of all the vehicles in Trinidad will be operating on, on liquefied gas. And I said, but that's going to be a big change. He says, no, Michael, because they have designed a simple part mm -hmm. which they can put into the vehicle to, to control it. Now, yeah. here's my question to you. Mm -hmm. If that happens, Take a person, I know much St. Louis is a very small market, it's not likely to manifest itself here, but from your experience running a petrol station, mm -hmm. in, in, in Trinidad, I'm told that the petrol stations now have to change their modus operandi to, uh, oh, oh, uh, can you throw a little light on that? Um, uh, let me give you the background to this, yes. some of the background to that. Mm. Trinidad's oil reserves, yes. I think about 720 billion, million yeah. gallons. And, and with the level of production somewhere near about 80,000 gallons um, a day, mm -hmm. they only have reserves about 30 years. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's just a generation. 30 years reserves. So they recognize, um, and coupled with that, fuel in Trinidad is heavily subsidized. Mm -hmm. Very heavily subsidized. Right. It's about 60% of what we pay. How much, how much is a gallon of pe a petrol in Trinidad today? A gallon of petrol in our EC dollars about would be somewhere dollars? about, no, in our money, oh. it would be about eight something. Eight dollars, okay. Yeah. And we are 15 something. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So what they have decided, look, we got to make the best use of what the reserves we have here. We can't be subsidizing fuel like that. Yeah. Yeah. So they have, they have an abundance of uh, natural gas. In fact, mm. in, in that particular case, they're looking to m get people to move to using compressed natural gas. Um, which is a lot cheaper yeah. and they offer an incentives to do so yeah. the the conversion kit right now government in its last budget has granted 40,000 TT dollars mm. hundred percent allowance and 40,000 TT dollars used mm. in acquiring a conversion kit to use um, CNG compressed natural gas to run the vehicles okay. the problem with the whether this is going to be successful or not is mm. there are some challenges mm. the cost of refurbishing or, or um, or rearranging or refitting some of the gas stations to yeah. accommodate CNG is very expensive. I can well imagine. So and, what they and, have and done... And without cutting you mm -hmm. short, and, and because not all are going to go, so they still exactly. have to have... Exactly. The, the, the. So um, what they need to... Everest, we, we need to take a break. We'll come back. Uh, we'll be right back. Yeah.